Hey there, Brew Crew, and welcome to another edition of The Sixer, our series of list videos. Last week, I did a list of my favorite heavy games. Uh, these were games that I considered not necessarily overburdened with rules, but that have a lot of decision space and depth of strategy. This week, I'm going to be talking about my favorite complex games. These are games that uh, have a lot of rules to cover most edge case scenarios. Similar to heavy games, I typically have to be in the right headspace to get these to the table. Uh, but what I love about these games is that when they are done well, they tend to feel incredibly thematic. These are the games that often lead to epic stories once the game is finished. Um, I don't tend to like as many of these more complex games, but the ones that I do like, I usually end up really loving. Uh, similar to my heavy games list, this list is organized using a bit of a matrix between how much I enjoy the game and how complex they seem to me. So, let's get started with my number six. Okay, my number six is Eldritch Horror. So, Arkham Horror was one of the first big games that we really got into when we started gaming. And I'll always have a little bit of a soft spot for it. Um... Eldritch Horror kept that thematic feel, but streamlined it a little bit at least. In this game, we are traveling around a map of the world, uh, encountering monsters and investigating clues to figure out which big bad is trying to break its way into our world. I'm a big fan of the cosmic horror genre, and I like that the game changes depending on which great old one you're investigating. Alright, that was my number six, Eldritch Horror. Number five on my list of complex games is Merchants and Marauders. This is a big sandbox style game set in the Caribbean during the Golden Age of Sail. Uh, you'll captain a ship and you can decide what kind of captain you want to be. You could be a merchant, an explorer, a bounty hunter, or a pirate. And as you gain treasure, you can upgrade to a bigger and better ship and gain glory, which is ultimately how you'll win the game. I'd really love to see them come out with a new edition of this game, uh, with a little bit of streamlining, mainly to the port actions, because those can kind of slow the play down. But overall, this is a super thematic game that I really enjoy playing. So, that was my number five, Merchants and Marauders. My number... Four game is Star Wars Rebellion. Uh, this is the one game on my list that I don't actually own. Uh, this game basically allows you to reimagine the plot of the original Star Wars trilogy. The rebels are on an unknown planet and completing missions to create distrust in the Empire, uh, while the Imperials are working to hunt down the rebel base and capture various rebel leaders. You can train up Farm Boy Luke into Jedi Luke, or use the Death Star to destroy planets. There's also a cool thematic system for deploying ships that kind of mimics the different uh, amounts of time that it would take to build, say, a TIE Fighter versus a Star Destroyer. Um, I'll admit that I haven't seen all of the Star Wars content out there, but as a fan of most of the films, this game was incredibly fun to play. So that's my number four, Star Wars Rebellion. Okay, number three for me is a game that probably would be a lot of people's number one, and that's Gloomhaven. Uh, this is an interesting mixture of thematic story with Eurowee puzzle. There are a fair amount of rules that govern things like special abilities and movement, but the combat portion itself is a pretty straightforward hand management mechanism. I appreciate the unique fantasy setting and the fact that the game comes with enough content to choke a dragon. Uh, most of all, though, I really enjoy the card play for combat, uh, in which you'll choose two cards, one of which will act as your initiative, and then play the top half of one card and the bottom half of another. Whichever cards you play will then be out of your hand until you decide to rest, but when you rest, you'll need to discard one either choosing one or picking one at random, depending on the type of rest that you take. Since your deck is also your life, 
it makes some uh, pretty tense moments trying to decide which cards you can play and which ones you may need later. We haven't been flying our way through this one, but I'm more than happy to have this one on my shelf to continue playing long into the future. So that's my number three, Gloomhaven. My number two complex game is Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Quite a few people at least know of this game because of the fact that it often takes four to six hours to play. Uh, we also like to play with as large a player count as we can get, so we've had games that have lasted eight to ten hours. Uh, this is the definition of an event game, where we make a plan to play it, and that's all we will do that day. Uh, this game has so many different elements, uh, negotiation, combat, trade, politics, and when you're done, you'll have an incredible story to tell. Uh, each race in the game has a unique power and ships and home system, which means that depending on the faction, you'll probably be playing the game in a very different way from your neighbor. Uh, whenever I think back to some of my favorite gaming experiences, TI is often in the mix. So that's my number two complex game, Twilight Imperium. And finally, my number one complex game is War of the Ring. And honestly, it was a tough call between this and TI for my number one. But I happen to be a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, I've been through the books and the movies multiple times, and I've even delved into some of the more obscure lore of Middle-earth. This game is the War of the Ring from those stories. One player commands the Shadow Armies and the other leads the Free Peoples. Each side comes with its own rules and challenges. Uh, there are different rules based on whether or not a faction is at war, rules for how strongholds work, rules for how leaders work, and rules for different members of the Fellowship, as well as rules for how the Shadow Player hunts for the Ring. Uh, but all of these rules make the game feel super thematic. This is another game, like Twilight Imperium, where I can look back on a game that we've finished and tell an epic tale of how the war played out. This is an incredible game, and I already can't wait to play it again. Um, if you're interested in a trimmed-down version, there's we've also played... Um, the Battle of Five Armies. Uh, this game is a bit more streamlined and easier to play, but for my money, I'd rather have the full experience of War of the Ring. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out for my list of complex games. Let me know in the comments what complex games you enjoy or which of these games you'd like to try. And until next time, let's get another round for the table. Hey everybody, don't forget to like and comment on this video. If you found value in this video at all, it would mean a lot to us if you consider subscribing to the channel as well. Don't forget to click the notification button so you'll know when we put out a new video. Cheers!